Megan gazes adoringly at Harry as she steps out in a vibrant fig dress, and gets mobbed by cheeky young fans in Fiji before her first speech of their tour. The Duchess of Sussex has gazed adoringly at her husband as the royal couple got into the island spirit in brightly colored outfits as they embarked on a morning of engagements in Fiji. Prince Harry and wife Meghan arrived at the University of the South Pacific campus in Suva on Wednesday, to mark the university's 50th anniversary. Meghan, 37, was wearing a vibrant 1,150 pounds, 2,110 Australian dollars. Fig Frederica printed ruffle dress, while her husband was in a blue tropical print shirt. The Duchess's wrap dress featured a v-neckline, along with an asymmetrical ruffle hem with palm palm and seashell detailing. She paired her frock with 80 pounds, 147 Australian dollars, costanier canvas wedges pedras that she wore on Sydney's Bondi Beach last week, along with Karen Walker earrings and an unusual serpent bracelet believed to be by Sean Lean. With the help of hairdresser George Northwood, who has joined Meghan on the tour, she wore her locks pinned up, finished off with a tropical flower headpiece. The royals were greeted by pipe-playing musicians and cheering crowds as they walked down the red carpet which had been rolled out for their arrival, with Meghan mobbed by young fans. The Duchess later gave a speech to university students, the first words she has spoken during their 16-day Commonwealth tour, which is more than halfway through. Meghan spoke of how the journey of higher education is an incredible, impactful and pivotal one. I am also fully aware of the challenges of being able to afford this level of schooling for many people around the world, myself included. It was through scholarships, financial aid programs and work-study where my earnings from a job on campus went directly towards my tuition, that I was able to attend university, she said. And, without question. It was worth every effort. Everyone should be afforded the opportunity to receive the education they want, but more importantly the education they have the right to receive. And for women and girls in developing countries, this is vital. Providing them with access to education is the key to economic and social development. Because when girls are given the right tools to succeed, they can create incredible futures, not only for themselves but also for those around them. Inside the university. The couple observed a cultural performance on the effects of climate change in the Pacific from the university's Oceania dance troupe, before meeting students studying subjects from agriculture to women's development. Their royal highnesses were hosted by Queen's young leader Elisha Azima Banu and Commonwealth Youth Award winner El Riz Kumar, both of whom are USP students. The event was live-streamed to a number of the university's campuses throughout the Pacific region. Prince Harry also made a speech in his capacity as Commonwealth Youth Ambassador. The couple then went in separate directions. The Duke traveled to Kolo I Suva Forest Park and the Duchess to the British High Commissioner's residence, before heading to Suva Market. Meghan was at the bustling market to meet female entrepreneurs when the visit was cut short due to the large crowds. The Duchess who is 12 to 14 weeks pregnant, had been due to spend 15 minutes chatting to female vendors who have been involved in the UN Women's Project Markets for Change. But she was taken out by her entourage after just eight minutes over what police described as crowd management issues. It was hot, humid and uncomfortably busy and there were far larger crowds than expected. A royal aide said she met everyone she was meant to meet and left. There would have been a lot of people who would have been keen to meet her but she did met those who had hoped to. On advice she was taken out due to crowd management issue. The decision to cut short the engagement came as a surprise and disappointment to many in the market, however. They pointed out that the crowds were being kept well back from the Duchess by police and royal security and she was not being mobbed. It's such such a shame as we were all very excited to meet her said one stallholder who had been positioned to expect a visit from the Duchess. We started preparing for the visit three weeks ago and he had been meant to meet her but she left without even saying hello. The Duke of Sussex had earlier left a touching handwritten note in Fijian at a wreath-laying ceremony at the National War Memorial in the Pacific Island nation. He was up early to lay a poppy wreath on Wednesday which carried the personal message in grateful memory of those who made the ultimate sacrifice in the service of their country. Lo lo makay namasu. Harry. The wording in Fijian means love and prayers. He also meet with a number of Fijian war veterans, some of whom served with the British Armed Forces, 
On his second day in the country, pregnant Meghan stayed behind at their luxury Suva hotel as her husband attended to his early morning official duties. The couple is staying at the Grand Pacific Hotel, where the Queen also stayed in 1953. Since then Fiji has hosted a number of royal visits, including five from the Queen and three from Prince Charles. Prince Harry, who served in the British Army for ten years, honored Fiji's proud military heritage at the wreath-laying ceremony. The Duke dressed in uniform accompanied by his medals and holding a sword, saluted as the last post was sounded and the Fijian flag lowered. There are more than 1,250 Fijians currently serving in the British Army and Prince Harry's Fijian orderly is also ex-British forces. After Prince Harry had laid the wreath, he was introduced to a lineup of veterans. The royal shook each man by the hand as he walked along the line and had a joke with one senior veteran. Meeting Malelai Nayigulvu from Koro Island, Prince Harry asked, Hello, how old are you? When Malelai told him his age, the prince exclaimed, 84, still looking very young. Afterwards Malelai said, I served for 40 years in the medical corps, I was a pathologist. It was very nice to meet Prince Harry today. He is a very good role model for us all. The British royals family are very popular here as Fiji was ceded to Great Britain and they taught us good things. As Prince Harry progressed down the line of veterans, he sounded very like his father Charles and grandfather Philip. Very nice to see you today he told each man. Did you enjoy your service? How are you today? Then he came to 12-year-old Taniela Vakalaka who was wearing all his father's medals as his dad died in Kenya two years ago. Harry asked him, whose are these medals? Your father's. Ah, are you going to join the army? You don't have to. Only if you want to. Prince Harry pulled his mum out of the crowd to shake her hand and told her how nice it was to meet her. Afterwards a rather shy Taniela said, it was very nice to meet him. Harry, my medals are my dad's. He passed away in 2016 in Kenya, in Africa. I miss him very much and I want to follow my dad. The Duke then spotted a friend. Brit Derek de Tanalogi knew the prince from the inaugural Invictus Games in London in 2014. He and his wife Anna, whose family are from Fiji, flew over specially for the royal visit and were invited to Tuesday night's state dinner. When Prince Harry spotted the couple he teased them. Late night last night? Look after yourselves. Anna said, we weren't on the list this morning for this wreath laying but his PA Clara told us to be here this morning. We were at the reception last night which was fun. We were very honored as he gave us each a hug. We did have quite a late night but Harry didn't. He and Meghan left with the president. At the state dinner on Tuesday night, Prince Harry had also spoke of how he had served alongside Fijian servicemen in Afghanistan. Your soldiers fought with the British armed forces during the First and Second World Wars and continue to serve alongside our soldiers to this day, with more than 1,250 Fijians currently serving, he said. I must emphasize my respect, admiration and camaraderie with the Fijian soldiers that I served with in Afghanistan. We trained together, we fought together, and most importantly we laughed together. On Thursday. The royal couple will travel to the city of Nadi in western Fiji, where they will attend a special event at Nadi Airport. After an official welcome ceremony, the Duke and Duchess will unveil a new statue commemorating Sergeant Talayasi Labalab. From Nadi Airport, their royal highnesses will take a chartered flight to Tonga. The visit to Fiji and Tonga is part of a mammoth 16-day tour, which also includes Australia and New Zealand.